Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop. In this video, I'll be looking at making zigzags, but we'll also come across a couple of other patterns as well using exactly the same filter. Let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. Okay, so I should point out to start with, that using Photoshop for illustrations isn't ideal. Maybe Adobe Illustrator would be the place to go. However, if you are already familiar with Photoshop, then why not? All right, I'm just going to create a new file. So I'm going to File and New. I'm going to choose uh, Facebook 72 is uh, one of my defaults that I've set up, which is 950 by 950 and 72 dots per inch. And I'm going to click OK, and I get this square. It's perfectly suitable for using on Facebook, as the name might suggest. Right, I'm going to use a background color. I've already chosen mine here. You can see that it's this orangey color. It's actually a nice code here, a hex code of F3C118. And I'm going to press Control or Command and Backspace just to fill that in to give me a background color. Right, now I need a black line and I'm going to use the shape tool for that. But first of all, I need to find the absolute middle. And I could go and make two guides, but I've made a very nice little action for that to find the middle. So I'm going to click on that. So I know where the middle is. And I'm going to get my shape tool and it's a rectangle. And I can just click once in the middle. And sure enough, it's asking me what dimensions I'd like. Well, I'd like it 950 by 150 for this first one. And from the center should be checked. I'm going to click OK. And there's my rectangle. Now I need this to be a smart object, so I'm going to right click and then choose convert to smart object. I could also go to filter and then choose convert for smart filters. Either way, it works the same. Let's do it there whilst we're here. Anyway, there we go. It's going to convert it. Let me just clear those guides. So view and clear guides. Now I can see that I'm a little bit off center. So if I get the move tool here and just tap on the arrow keys. There we go. I'm dead center now. Right, let's make this into a zigzag. All I need to do is go to filter and then distort. And you might think that I want to go to zigzag, but I don't. But let me show you why I don't. You can see that we have three different styles here around the center, which gives us this kind of look. We have out from center, which gives us a little bit more of a, a ripply effect and then finally pond ripples which uh, yeah isn't what we're after either so I'm going to cancel that what I need to do is go to filter and then distort and actually need to go to wave and we get this dialog box now you can see we're starting to get somewhere where we need it to be you can see that if I bring up the amount here it starts to go a bit off so let's keep that down to low numbers and now I can change the wavelength of these. So you can see how it kind of elongates it out, the minimum and the maximum. If I bring this one up, you can see that it starts to move both together because obviously the maximum, uh, the minimum can't be more than the maximum. Yes, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I had to check myself then. The minimum cannot be more than the maximum. And sure enough, I can do the same with the amplitude as well. Let's bring these down so we can see what's going on. The amplitude as well. And then finally, we've got some scale. Now, this is all very well. Now, you notice that that one didn't work at all because that one is the horizontal. And actually, we've got nothing going on on the horizontal at all here. So I can keep that one down. But you see, we're sort of getting a zigzaggy kind of pattern. What we've got up here is triangle. So let's click on triangle. And this is more of the zigzag that I'm after. In fact, after playing around with these sliders, I came up with a number of generations being one, because if I go any higher, you see some very strange things start to happen. Although that's not so bad, is it? Um, more sort of Homer Simpson's hair. Uh, but I'm going to keep that to one. And then if I come down to wavelength, I'm going to put in here uh, one and two, eight, seven, excuse me, one and two, eight, seven. So let's bring that one right down. And then this one at two, eight seven and there we go we're starting to make the kind of zigzags that i'm after already um, this one wants to be 405 and then whoops and then in the maximum there i want to be 999 which is the highest it can be 
I'm just pressing tab to move on to the next box here by the way. The scale, well I've already got my horizontal at 1 and then the vertical for me must be around the 23. And sure enough I've got that kind of look that I was after that zigzag after the cartoon characters t-shirt sort of pattern that I was after and I can click OK on that and there we have it as easy as that. Now because I've made it into a smart object I can always go back in of course and change that should I wish. Maybe I want to bring the amplitude down to make them a bit bolder. I kind of like it. Or I might want to change the wavelength, stretch them out, bring them in, whichever I choose. OK, I'm going to click OK on that one. I'm going to just hide this for a second and go and get my nice guides back again. Find the middle guides. find that very handy. I'm going to make a new box, again using exactly the same way as I did before, a black box. Uh, this time uh, 950 by 100 this time. And again from the center and click OK. Again I want to make it into a smart object. So convert for smart filters. And then I can clear my guides, view and clear guides. And once again I've missed the center so with the move tool just nudge it across with the arrow keys. This time I'm going to go to filter and distort and wave just as we did before. But this time I'm going to change it to square and we can see more of what's going on here. So if I start with the wavelength here you can see that I can bring these squares in or indeed take them out. You can see they're becoming more squares here and then rectangles there. So I want to keep these to a reasonably low level. In fact about 325 I think is where I was experimenting with before. But that looks a bit too high. Let's go back down. There we go. That's a bit better. Uh, the amplitude, well again we can have a look see what's going on here. This is going to alter them in that direction and then a little bit more like this depending on what we want to do. In fact I want to bring these down just so they're going to touch and sure enough we're already starting getting the pattern I wanted which is kind of this checkerboard effect that get, we get on the side of taxis in New York. And then the scale uh, around about 23-ish I think again about 20% will do me fine. OK, now I need to bring this amplitude up just a little bit, just to squeeze them apart. There we go. Now if I click OK, we have this pattern. Excellent. Good. So let's get the Move tool and just move that up. And then, oh, just taking it a bit off. And then I can get the my jumper pattern back on as well so we can see those. And there we are. Really simple use of that filter. All you need to do is to go to filter and convert for smart filters and then in distort choose wave. Have a play with generations, wavelength, amplitude and scale and you come up with all kinds of lovely patterns. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget if you enjoyed this to give it a like, maybe a comment as well and please subscribe for more Photoshop goodness in the future. My name is Eric Renault. I'll see you at tipsquirrel.com. Bye bye for now.